All right, let's dive into this lighting tutorial. I am going to walk you through my process of lighting a scene in Blender, just like a professional CJ artist would. Lighting is one of my favorite aspects of 3D rendering. It's what brings a scene to life, sets the mood and tells a story. I have worked as a lighting artist on multiple studios projects. And today, I will share my experience and techniques with you. So uh, stick with me till the end and let's make your render shine. First, let's talk about why lighting is so important. Lighting isn't just about making things visible, it's about creating emotions and atmosphere. Take a look at this scene. With just a few adjustments, I have created two completely different modes. One feels bright and cheerful, like a sunny afternoon, while the other feels dark and mysterious. In filmmaking, lighting is often used to evoke specific emotions, and the same principle applies to 3D rendering. Lighting can make or break your scene, so it's worth mastering. Now, let's jump into the blender and start lighting this scene. I have already set up a basic environment with a character in the background and a bike in the foreground. The bike is going to be our main focus, so we will light it accordingly. Before we start, let's make sure our settings are optimized. I prefer rendering in cycles because it gives realistic results and I always use GPU rendering to speed things up. For sampling, I set it to 128 samples, I enable optics denoising just to clean up the noise in the render. When I hit render right now, you will notice that the background is lit up, but the rest of the scene is uh, pitch black. That's because I have used a mesh plane with an emission shader for the background. My goal is to create a sunny afternoon vibe, so let's start adding lights. Most people use HDRIs for outdoor scenes, and while they are great, Mm, they have one limitations. You can't control the sun and sky separately. Instead, I am going to use a spotlight to create the sun. The default sunlight in Blender works fine, but uh, I prefer the spotlight because it gives me more control. Now, setting the direction of the light can be a bit tedious. So, here's a trick I use. Just select the light, go to the constraint tab, add a track to constraint and use the picker tool to target your subjects. In this case, the bike. This way the light will always point at the bike, no matter how you move it. It's a huge time saver. Once the light is aimed, I will increase the intensity to mimic sunlight and add a warm yellow tint to it. I will also increase the spot size so the light covers the entire scene. Right now, the shadows look too sharp. In most cases, you will want to avoid sharp shadows unless they are specifically required for your scene. In real world filmmaking, sharp shadows are often solved on using reflectors or light brokers. In Blender, we can achieve the same effect by increasing the light's radius. Just be careful not to overdo it. We still want to maintain that bright sunny feel. Next, I will add some ambient light to brighten up the dark shadows. The best way to do this is by using an overcast HDRI. This allows us to control the sun and sky separately, giving us more flexibility with our lighting. With the HDRI in place, the scene already looks much better, but I'm not done yet. To make this scene more interesting, I will add some dynamic shadows using the tree in the environment. This creates a gobo effect, where the light passes through the trees and casts interesting patterns on the ground. You can also use Kobo textures in front of your lights to achieve this, but um, I prefer using real geometry for more accurate results. Now, let's take a look at this bike. There are still some dark areas, especially underneath and around the wheels. To fix this, I will add a few area lights to provide some bounce light. In real world filmmaking, reflectors are often used to add lights to darker areas. And we are doing the same thing here. These lights will brighten up the shadows and make the bike look more three-dimensional. And there you have it. By following these steps, you have transformed a flat, lifeless scene into something vibrant and full of depth. Lighting is all about control and storytelling. 
With the right techniques, you can create any mood or atmosphere you want. I have used this same method to create multiple environments and lighting setups. And I hope they help you take your renders to the next level. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments what topic you would like me to cover next. I have also made videos on other aspects of rendering, so feel free to check those out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.